Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. an Israeli intelligence agent who became a dog trainer. Well, New York Times best-selling author and celebrity dog trainer Tamar Geller is going to talk about how she helped me turn my pit bull Mikey into a gentleman. After that, Dr. Annie O'Donnell, who's a veterinarian and a veteran of varmints, is going to be sharing some insights on how you can give the best care to your pets. Then we're going to hear an amazing story about a donkey that had a second chance of life thanks to his adopter Wendy McCaw. So we've got lots of barks, purrs, and a hee-haw or two right here on the Animal Zone. Oh, who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Oh. Sweetheart, what about these puppies? Oh. Honey puppies. Oh. Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay, neuter, and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Thank you for joining us. Let's head back into the Animal Zone. Well, Oprah called her the life coach for dogs and their owners. She's a New York Times bestseller. Tamar Geller is with us. I'm so thrilled, Tamar, you're I'm here. I'm so grateful to be here with you. We have a history because we go back to the early days of Mikey. This is the pit bull you may have seen on other episodes, who is the sweetest dog, but he was very stubborn and very bullheaded. I mean, talk about a pit bull. He was a pit bull in a china shop. Yes, he was a pit bull in a china <laughs> shop, absolutely. Eight years ago. That's right. And so we turned uh, little Mikey over to Tamar to see whether we could figure out how we could get this guy to do anything we wanted him to do. That's true. Now, how did you figure out how what makes dogs tick? And I know tick is not a word dogs like to hear, but, <laughs> but how did you figure it out? <laughs> well, my background is I used to be an intelligence officer with the elite special forces in Israel. And when you go to the service in Israel, they test you to see where is your strength? Because they really want to put you in a position where you're going to benefit the country the most naturally. And turns out that I was very good at uh, behavior, and particularly at behavior, at finding the little things that don't matter. But ultimately, the little things were as strong as our weakest link. Okay, so now, cut to when I was done with the service, I thought I would continue with behavior and be a therapist, become a psychologist, but I needed a break and I went to the desert and so happened somebody was doing uh, wolf research behavior. And there are, I- There are wolves in the Israeli desert? Asian wolves, Asian oh. wolves. They're not the fluffy big wolves. They really look more like coyotes. Oh. And I just started tagging along and helping out. And that's when it all came into place. And I actually had a dream that said, you must work with dogs. Like you have to abandon my, your plan and do that, and it's amazing because I think when we really listen to our gut, oftentimes we are directed to go where we are meant to go, which may not be necessarily making sense to our brain, to our, you know, what we really want, our plan of our life. You know, we have some, we have those conversations of, we have our desire, we have our wishes, and we have our plan, and sometimes God's plan is better. So here we are today, 
And when, when I'm working with dogs or with the people, I'm coming as a servant. I'm here to serve the dog and I'm here to serve the dog's parents. What can I do to help make the relationship the best possible? Not the dog obedient. Right. To make the dog be his best version of himself and to make the relationship the best possible. Because when you got that amazing baby calf, because he looks like That's a baby calf. That's what Mikey's calf. nickname is, baby yes, calf. Yes, baby calf. <laughs> you know, when you got him, you didn't get a dog because you needed somebody who, who was going to be obedient to you. That's not why we get dogs. You got a dog because you There's have love. the biggest heart. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah. And he was a really a mess, physically and emotionally. It's true. He was a mess. Yeah. He didn't trust. He was scared. And that's where I think his stubbornness came from. We oftentimes are stubborn when we try to control the situation because we feel if we're not going to take matters into our own hands or into our own paws, we're going to suffer. Yeah. You know, and when you realize that that's where it comes from, it all of a sudden gives compassion and you try to connect and build the dog up and build the trust and build the faith as opposed to you shut up, you be obedient, blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of like where we connected because I think our value system mm -hmm. and where you and me come with dogs is come from the same philosophy, same belief system of service, making, contributing to them. Not the, not the carrot and not the stick. It's a different approach. It's, Completely it's different approach. What I'm trying to do is to do my part to contribute to nature, to realize that I am part of nature. And if my way is through dogs, then I will honor and I'll contribute to dogs as much as possible. That is my way and to try to understand them because they're actually very smart, very, very smart beings, very smart. We have a lot to learn from dogs in my mind, personally, individually. You know, I believe each one of us get a dog that it's not randomly. I don't believe nothing happens in the world randomly. I believe everything is for There's purpose. a divine, the divine intelligence yeah. behind things. Me too. I'm with you. Right? Yep. Don't you find something that doesn't work out or a door that closes years down the road? We go and we say, oh, <laughs> thank, thank goodness it thank closed. Thank goodness it because closed. Because a lot of other doors open up, right? which wouldn't have opened otherwise. Right? Yeah. Right? So I feel when you get a dog, number one, he brought us together, which I'm so grateful for. Me too. But, the, but really, but there's like a bigger thing. I mean, just to see the change in him you know, over the years and to see everything that you had learned in the, you know, personally from having a dog like that, how he opened your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? All right. Well, in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. And when okay. we come back, we'll bring Mikey out here and we'll figure out just how much he's really learned. And I've not seen him in years, so. Yep. We'll be right back after these words. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeffany Telson with Rescue Cats. In the last 21 years, we have adopted out almost 3,000 stray and abandoned cats and kittens. Not only does it make a difference for them, but it will also make a difference in your life knowing that you've done something that's good for the animals. They bring such joy, laughter, and most important of all, unconditional love into your life. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay, neuter, and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. And we're back here on Animal Zone with Tamar Geller and Mikey. Mikey is the wonderful love of my life. He's been such a good boy uh, all these years after he's been trained with Tamar. And Tamar trained me too, certain degree. Um, <laughs> and so I'm going to get down and beg. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get Mikey to do a few things that I learned from Tamar. Right, Mikey? Let's Should we see do a couple how things? He's doing eight years later. Okay, Mikey. Let's, uh, first of all, Mikey, come around here. Let's, let's, oh, come He's over like here. The camera, <laughs> come no. over here. Come over here. Okay, Mikey, sit. Sit. 
Good sit. sit. Good sit. Good sit. But here is what I love. He says good sit, not good boy. Good oh. Arthur. Uh, good job. <laughs> okay, Mikey. Mikey off. Mikey off. Mikey off. Wow. Oh, catch. Good catch. catch. You're amazing. You really are. Because These are things you told me. No, but most people do not follow up and they just revert to good dog. Oh. No. When we're teaching a language to a dog and we want to say what is the behavior to actually name the behavior the way we do with children when we teach them a language. So good job. So we speak to our dogs like we speak to our people, right? Yes. Okay, Mikey, sit. Sit. Mikey, down. Wow. Oh, good down. Good down. So put the down on the, on the That's ground. That's going to be the next one. Oh, okay. Because I have a few. I have one thing I haven't learned from you, but okay. we're going to see if it works. All right. Okay. Okay, Mikey, come back up. Wow! Good boy. Up. Okay, stay. Wait. Now, Mikey, remember this? Wow! Wait, wait, wait. Okay! Ah! <laughs> there awesome. is the Mikey performance! Awesome! <laughs> You're doing amazing! Amazing, 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 Mikey! And what's great wow. is all those things you trained uh, Mikey and me on. Have oh, who did I train? The dog. Thank you. Okay, tell me, tell us about that, because I, I do make a mistake. So I here is the one issue that I heard you tell me this morning, that when you say his name and you're calling him, he doesn't come back. Yeah. And I said, okay, let's see how many times you say his name when you're not talking about him. And what did we find out? I talk about him all the time with his name. With his name. Yeah. So what happened, unbeknownst to you, in the past eight years, you desensitized him <laughs> to his own name by simply saying it again and again and again without actually addressing him. So I bet in the first few weeks when he said his name, he looked at you. Yeah, and now, now he ignores me. That's exactly What's interesting, right. he, he does pay attention to one thing I say. Mm -hmm. Watch this, treat, treat. I, because. Because <laughs> I call him be, when I have a treat. There you go. So what happened is the most important word in every dog's Life is his name. I there would say that's go. his sacred Good shake. word. Good shake. shake. Good Oops, shake. Take Oops, sorry. sorry. So now that you're aware of it, right. do you know what I mean? I it's like you, and, and you see, it's so hard mm -hmm. not to say the dog's name. So here are the rules. Okay. You can say his name as much as you want when you're talking to him. So I love you, Mikey. And you said Down, it's also Mikey, important to take off your glasses. Everything. Yes, when I'm training, mm -hmm. I have to connect with him because words actually accounts to only 20% of communication. Yeah. Physical you know, at the most, movements. When we communicate, it's body language, it's face expression, it's tone of voice. All of that is so much more important. So if you're on a first date and somebody, you're trying to read the other person, trying to get information other than the words, right? Mm -hmm. And that with glasses, what do you feel? I cannot read you. Can't get through. No. I can't get through. So that's why when I'm working with a dog, when I'm teaching, I have to have glasses off. Tamara, this has been so great. I've learned so much again from you. Thank you. I love it. Come back on Animal Zone again soon. Anytime you want, I'm here. That's great. <laughs> and we'll be seeing you after these words. I'm Isabel Gola with Care for Paws. I personally, over the years, fostered and rescued a lot of animals and found home for them. And even though Care for Paws is not a rescue group or shelter, it, we really promote adoption. Not only does it lower shelter population, but an adopted pet can enrich your life in so many ways. And we really encourage you to visit your local shelter, or call a local rescue group, and find your forever friend. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them! Hey, we're back here with Dr. Annie O'Donnell from the Lacumbra Animal Hospital. And Dr. Annie, thanks for joining us again on Animal Zone. This is fun, thank you. Okay, so I'm a dog owner and I love my dog, but you know, he was an adopted dog and I didn't know when I went to go and adopt him what to look for. What do you suggest for our viewers when they go and look at dogs in shelters? 
what they should look for? Yeah, I think the most important is that you have a connection with that pet. Um, so, you know, going to the petting room, spending time with him or her, and, you know, seeing, you know, is he coming up to you? Is he affectionate? You know, is that what you want in a dog? And then I think it's also important, you know, just his general appearance. Does he look healthy to you? But then possibly asking if they'll allow it, you know, if, if there are any behavioral concerns or any medical concerns that the staff has. Um, because definitely there are some pets that are more needy than others. And if your lifestyle just doesn't fit for a very needy, demanding pet, then, you know, maybe you can find a connection with another dog at the so, shelter. So there are less needy dogs dogs, more independent dogs, almost cat-like maybe. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I mean, as, as it goes down, you always are going to, when you have a dog, it's like having a two-year-old, really. I mean, you got to be on there all the time. They're not, you can't just put down the food and water and go away for a few no, days. No, not at all. Not with dogs. Yeah. No, they definitely want that attention and infection. And if you already have pets at the home, how do you kind of figure introducing this new animal to the rest of the family? I think the best way to introduce them is very slowly and so separating them in different rooms and then when you do make the decision that okay they're doing okay they're starting to ignore each other they're getting more comfortable with one another then definitely you know supervise them you know maybe even having a collar or leash on each pet and so you know if there is a conflict that you can easily bring them apart and, and so there's not a, a major conflict at home. Because we, we know, I know when uh, like a cat feels threatened, suddenly uh, its uh, its back gets up, it makes itself look really big. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the tail goes out that way yeah. and the, sometimes the ears go back. Kind of a good sign that this is not going to go on too well. Not, so maybe make the transition even slower if you see signs like that, most yeah. definitely. What does a dog do when a dog is feeling threatened or might be aggressive? So they also, their hair will stand up on end. Um, they can, you know, stare at you and then of course the lip curl as well. And then if they're starting to growl or snap, then... It's definitely a sign, Too late. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I know when, when you think about dogs, you don't really think about their dental hygiene, but that's an issue too, isn't it? As far as keeping their teeth clean. Do you guys take care of uh, dogs' teeth? Yes, we do. Definitely we recommend to the owners if they can brush their teeth actually on a daily basis that that's the best thing for their teeth as far as preventative care. Now, we still recommend, like in People Medicine, to have a dental cleaning once a year. At the hospital I work at, we actually reward owners who get their dog's teeth cleaned on an annual basis and and help them out financially just to you know keep their their dog's health so if you're brushing a dog's teeth do you use like Pepsodent or Crest or is there <laughs> anything that they the dogs like so actually um, there are dog flavored toothpaste and so it's cute um, they come in beef flavored chicken flavored and I think <laughs> it's a lot more accepting to them than mint or whatever it might be oh, I can't wait to brush my teeth with chicken flavored toothpaste that's a whole new idea. Puppies. I mean, we all adore puppies. But how often do you need to take a puppy to the vet when you get one? When somebody first adopts a puppy, we recommend having them checked out a couple times their first four months of, of, of life. Um, so ideally, what we do is check them out at eight weeks and then again when they're 16 weeks old, just to touch base and see how things are going at home. What about vaccines? You know, there's, there's a lot of vaccines that you can get, some are optional, some are, I guess, required. Mm -hmm. Which ones do you think are essential? So the two core or essential vaccines that all dogs should get are DAP, a distemper, adenovirus, and parvovirus vaccine, a combo vaccination, as well as rabies. And then there's several lifestyle vaccines available, again, depending on, on what, what their lifestyle is. I've also seen sometimes dogs are a little bit, let's say, rotund. Is there a uh, Wag Waiters Anonymous? <laughs> Is there something for dogs that eat too much to try and help them lose some poundage? Yeah, so taking away treats, um, so a lot of people food, you know, are higher in calories, and so eliminating treats is definitely the first step. Then even considering reducing the amount of kibble that they get on a daily basis, so actually measuring it out, seeing how much you're giving, and then talking to your veterinarian as far as how much as far as percentage-wise, you should drop that kibble. And then there are weight management diets. Typically speaking, the prescription 
diets that are out there are a little bit better than what you can find over the counter, just in the sense that they have shown with their studies that um, they're able to reduce the weight of dogs more so than just what you can buy over the counter. So cutting back some food, exercising probably more, mm -hmm. kind of just like what people yes, need to do. How sad for those dogs. <laughs> um, but dogs need their exercise too, don't they? I mean, yes. if they're out there running around, they seem to be happy and then they'll sleep all day. Yep, exactly, right? yeah. Do dogs uh, feel emotions, do you think? Yeah, I'd say so. I think they actually reflect and, and can feel our emotions too. When we're excited, they're excited. Um, when we're kind of down and out, I don't know, sometimes I feel like they just know that, okay, it's kind of a time out right now. Doggone it. We got a lot of good information, Annie. Thank you so much. And uh, appreciate you being on Animal Zone again with us. And uh, we'll be back after these words. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry. If someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. There's an amazing story about a donkey that would have almost died had it not been that his caretaker had gone an extra mile or several to bring him around. And that caretaker is Wendy McCaw. Wendy, tell us a little bit about, first of all, Eli. Where did Eli come from? Eli was considered to be an orphan in the desert and he was rounded up by the BLM. And I went over to Ridgecrest and um, saw him over there and he looked pretty miserable. So I decided I should have him because I could give him a better life than what he was getting there. So when you adopt a donkey, uh, then you'd have to bring him out by trailer. Right, right to, bring him out by to trailer. To California, to Santa Barbara. And then, um, and he had a pretty good life. Everything was going smoothly, right? Everything he was great. Eating well, he was happy. He was great. He had a companion, Watson. Uh -huh. He was a lot smaller than Watson, but he was the alpha male because he was so feisty. <laughs> and um, Watson understood that. He understood that for, you know, 10, 12 years. And then something changed. Something changed. When you have jacks, they always try to establish who is alpha. And this goes back and forth. They always test each other, and this was nothing new. And one day, um, Watson was testing Eli, and he mounted his back like they always do when they test, the, you know, who is ever the stronger of the two. And there were landscapers in the corral who freaked out by the whole thing, and they panicked and sent the animals into a tizzy. Uh, they really spooked the animals, and Eli's knees buckled, and he fell to the ground. And then what happened? Well, what happened was Eli went downhill really fast. He started to get really wobbly and woozy, and he couldn't really stand up straight, and he wasn't eating correctly. And uh, we called out the vet, Dr. Steve Goss, who didn't, he took blood tests and everything else, and he couldn't see what was wrong with him, but he came out a couple days later, and he said he really has a neurological problem. You have to get him over to Doug Herthel in the valley, over at Alamo Pintado. And that's a specialist that works on horses all around the world. Right. Race horses and very, very special horses. So exactly. It must have been unusual to have a donkey turn up there. I think that was probably one of the first times <laughs> that they had a donkey trailered in, especially one in that shape. Yeah. They tried different uh, procedures to try and get him up and running again. They right? did. They did numerous tests. They put him in the hyperbaric chamber and that didn't do anything. They had him on antibiotics because by then he was getting pneumonia. They had him on anti-inflammatories thinking that maybe he had a, um, a cervical injury, but they weren't sure until they did um, an MRI, I guess. And uh, they determined that he had a severe spinal injury and he was going paralyzed really quickly. All right, well, uh, tell us about the stem cells. So how did that come about? Doug Herthel suggested uh, by this time we had to do something, either that or put him down. And he said the only thing really left to do was to try stem cells. They had never tried it on a donkey before. They had never tried horse donor cells on, on any other animal before. So this was a crossbreed type of, or cross, I guess, what species. do you call it? Species, yeah. yeah. But he said, you know, we should give it a try. 
That, that was our last hope, basically, that if this didn't work, then we would have to put him down. So we tried it the first time, and he was a little bit better. He could stand basically with assistance holding him, but without the assistance, he you know, was back down on the ground again. And when they saw that he was getting weaker again, they decided, well, maybe we'll do another, another round of stem cells. And again, he got a little bit stronger. He could stand with, you know, without, with assistance. But there again, a couple weeks later, he was going back downhill again. At that point, Doug said, you know, it generally takes about three times for stem cells to really work. So we decided third time we'll try it. And I made sure that, you know, Eli at that point, if he was willing to go that extra distance, because by that time he did have the bed sores and they were so bad they had to put him in a nylon shroud that they zipped up around him to keep him from abrading himself anymore on the, on the ground. Even though he had hay and, you know, he had really great care. He had 24 hour care and everybody was watching him all the time. He still was, since not being able to stand, he was still be, getting bed sores. Uh, the third time was tried and, um, I think this was this was this all started in May and the stem cells were in June and July and on the 31st of July the attendant came in to check on him in the morning and found that he was standing up on his own. Wow. And they couldn't believe it. They thought something somebody had stood him up. They thought something happened. They didn't know, you know, they were just gobsmacked. So since he had 24-hour care and he had a camera in his stall, they rewound the videotape and saw that about 3, 3.30 in the morning, Eli stood up on his own. As Doug Herthel said, it wasn't a pretty sight, but at least he got up on his own. Amazing. And it was just, you know, from there it was, you know, he was out there for a couple more months, about three more months, I think. He came home in September um, just to make sure that he was, you know, continuing to improve. And we wanted Eli to have Watson out there with him because he, they had always been together and we didn't want Eli to feel that he had been sort of parked out there by himself so we had Watson over there for the remainder of the time not that they could get together or anything but at least they could speak to one another. And this, this laid new frontier for cross-species stem cell work and now if you look up in the internet Eli the donkey you'll find all these papers scientific papers right. about how this happened. And Broke what... new ground for sure and um, did you ever know when you adopted Eli that you'd be going through all this? Never had a clue. W was it worth it? Absolutely it was worth it. It was worth it for him because he really wanted to live and that was the most important thing was to get him healthy again. I mean the side benefit was that you know it, it, it blazed new ground for, for all the, the stem cell work. And the, I think another important point that I'd like to make too is that we used racehorse, retired racehorses stem cells that had been banked because we didn't have enough time to get Eli's marrow and get it spun and get it ready for him. So we had, we were forced to use the racehorses uh, stem cells. But what I did do is I did bank some of Eli's marrow that has been turned into stem cells in the event he ever has to go back out there or in the event that another burrow needs, needs that kind of treatment. Wow. Amazing story. Eli's a very lucky guy. Yeah, we're lucky too. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, with that amazing story, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more Animal Zone. Hi, I'm Jimmy Connors, and you're watching Animal Zone. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. Weren't there some amazing animals and guests? You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine, friend for all time. So glad you're my best friend Through thick and thin We'll see things through Canine of mine, so true Did I find
find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity. When I saw you, it was plain to see. You weren't just another lassie wanna be, oh, canine of mine. Friend for all time. I'm so glad you're my best friend.